Hello there and welcome to the Hash Power Academy, your place to learn anything to do with Bitcoin. And for today's video, it's the subject area of Bitcoin country, El Salvador. So I've just come back from El Salvador and it was my second ever visit there. My first visit was before Bukele came into power. And I was telling people this when I was over there in El Salvador and they were quite surprised. And just seeing the duopoly, the complete polarized opposite of going the first time where it was barren, empty streets and be careful and we had an armed guard traveling through to a completely different place of development, construction, thriving activity, music and food and just human expression of freedom essentially. Now there is problems and there's solutions. And the particular video today could go into a hundred different directions, but I'd like to address and discuss three different areas. The dollarization of El Salvador and the emergence of the dollar probably expanding even further across Latin American countries as a whole. Energy adoption. The price of energy debt is really high. And this is the Hash Power Academy, so lo and behold, we have to discuss the idea of Bitcoin mining providing energy adoption. And one of the different talks that I did in a place called Berlin in El Salvador, not in Germany, in El Salvador, is that if energy prices are really high, or if anything's really high in price, you've got to start thinking about how you can produce it yourself. And that is where Bitcoin mining comes into the discussion. And then this final piece, financial adoption, the context of Bitcoin over there in El Salvador, that from 2021, there was this skyrocket of people coming into El Salvador, adoption of Bitcoin as a medium of exchange, accepted as payment, and then going, going there this time, almost nobody was accepting Bitcoin. And I alluded to this in another video about medium of exchange requiring costs to be in quantities of Bitcoin. So the natural business cycle of receiving goods and services, or sorry, uh, paying for goods and services with Bitcoin, the business owner using said Bitcoin to pay his costs in Bitcoin, and he creates a natural business cycle without commissions and swaps. But we can delve into all of these different areas. So let's start with dollarization. Now, if you've ever gone through a market, food, you know, food places in Latin America, you're typically used to hearing da 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 and peso, peso, peso. But <laughs> it was quite strange to hear and dollar, and dollar, and dollar. So everything was bagged up and one dollar. And yeah, it's, it's quite interesting to see this, this dynamic of a place that had its own currency before and now the dollar. And I think this is going to continue as, as a phenomena within, within Latin America as a whole even. Places such as Bolivia maybe now will start using the dollar as well. These places where the currencies are weak, inflationary, hyperinflationary, collapsing. So storing your time and energy in these currencies, people of Latin America are very familiar to losing all of their savings multiple times over. So even just saving in dollars allows you to preserve your time and energy whilst everyone else is falling to the wayside. Now you can even analogize this one step up to Bitcoin, which is you holding Bitcoin and preserving your time and energy in an appreciating economic energy system of fixed supply with expanding energy. So your, your preservation of your time and energy is even more accelerated and volatile in the context of Bit, Bitcoin to dollar as well. But this dollarization aspect I think does help, but it's gonna cause problems. This, this chase of wanting to be earning more, your salary, but also your costs chasing and taking everything away. And the, the interplay between trying to earn more and your costs taking it all away is something where prices have really gone up. So people are trying to, yes, get paid more and all the costs are taken all away. But this really delves us into this next topic of, well, electricity prices are really high. And something that I like to say is that energy prices, and electricity in this example, is a friction or a freedom to society. And I also say this to people, would you be happy with your current salary if your costs were lower? Just widens that margin between what you earn and what's taken away and your savings. And so when it comes to the idea of Bitcoin mining in El Salvador, there's a couple of opportunities here and there. 
And I was also researching that there is a net metering relationship. So if there is anyone in El Salvador, or you know someone in El Salvador, or you have family there, there is a way to not just think of Bitcoin mining as make money, literally, figuratively, mathematically, physically, <laughs> all of the words, um, but also using it as a opposite to producing energy as a system which allows you to remove costs from your life. That if you have excess energy in your battery and solar system, that you could drain it into your digital wallet as money. But the aspect of the electricity grid there having a net metering relationship means that you can produce energy with a solar system in an area of the world which has got very high solar intensity, so you can produce a lot of energy, and yeah, store it in a battery, but those are costly, but you could also sell it to the electricity grid. And net metering is what you sell to them or what you consume is net and accounted in your bill. So if you can have this system where you produce excess energy with a solar system, sell it to the grid, so to speak, and consume what you do consume, you want to produce a sold price. You want to pr produce more than you consume, just like spending, spending less than you earn, <laughs> other way around, energy and money are getting quite uh, all aligned together. So where I'm going with this is the mining aspect is, well, what if not storing credits with the energy company, but instead just accounting your, your production of energy to a consumption and keeping the sold price in Bitcoin. And what this does is all the heating system side of things, which is not really needed in El Salvador unless you're trying to create a sauna or a lavanderia, different like uh, businesses that will need heat. So these are the sorts of projects that I'd like to absolutely deep dive into. Again, if there's anyone interested in these sorts of things, let me know. And where I'm trying to go with this is we're going back to this thing of the costs, the, the energy costs take all of the money away. And you've got to think of new systems that give you that access to produce your own power, remove those costs, yes, with some upfront costs in this process. But with a system such as mining, it will allow you to turn your excess produced energy into money in your wallet. And this starts all of the different aspects of financial adoption. But as of today, there is a problem with adoption because costs need to be in Bitcoin. And the example I gave for Berlin is they've got lots of, uh, well, the East refers to them as tuk-tuks. And, um, and basically these like mini taxis with three wheels. And they're very loud, very, very loud. And it would be great if there was like a, an idea to create a fleet of electric taxis that would pay their costs in Bitcoin because they're making Bitcoin miners switch off to sell the power. So the miners getting paid either way. But what this does is reduces noise in the city, creates a service and a business that can use that excess energy in a way that is yeah, it's, it, it creates a, a business that can be priced in Bitcoin, both costs, and then they would want to be paid Bitcoin. So the adoption of Bitcoin really needs to find opportunities where it removes commissions and swaps. Because the other thing that I would like to talk about in another video is that in El Salvador, the wallets, the, the Bitcoin wallets people use, take uh, commissions here and there. And free market competition is obviously going to sort of remove those costs, but to, to develop a wallet and sustain it, they've got to take their money somewhere. But taking money in, taking money from swaps between being paid in Lightning and wanting it out in layer one, or I, I paid someone in layer one $50, and they actually received like $43 in Lightning. So there was a $7 fee just because I don't know. It's like, but this can't happen, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So everything to do with the adoption of Bitcoin is, well, people are happy with the dollar right now. And to get to, to, get to a, a Bitcoin adoption from a financial lens, people really need to see the, the benefits of using Bitcoin, accepting Bitcoin. Uh, because many many people have different uses for Bitcoin as store of value. I have excess savings. I'm going to store it in something that preserves value over time instead of 
storing my economic value in a house or economic value in gold or that you, the store of value aspect of Bitcoin is preserving what you have already over time. Medium of exchange from the consumer side is maybe a person choosing to spend with a particular money, Bitcoin. On the business side, the, the person receiving money, they need to see medium of exchange not have commissions and fees and swaps because their costs are in Bitcoin. And then that the, the key solution to both store of value and medium of exchange really creating natural circular economies is unit of account. And this is where I absolutely get quite obsessed and focused on. So yeah, I think this will be uh, enough for now. I will do some more videos on El Salvador. There's many different other aspects to, to delve into, such as uh, no tax for like 10 to 15 years on tourism and tech, which is seeing lots of companies move, such as Tether. I even saw Google as well that these large entities, to do with the dollar and other entities, that these sorts of companies are going to see the opportunity to invest in a country that is growing in all manner of ways. And these sorts of companies, as well as tourism as well, are going to see the opportunities to, to get in early. And I think seeing this flood of people go, go into El Salvador, and a lot of them have left, but we are in the sort of... Uh, adoption bear market so to speak so there's always the bear market builders that get the best opportunities is what i would say until next time talk soon adios